Hi everyone and welcome to the first video post on liamb.me. Today we're going to be having a look at the idea of having a project flow. That's going to be the same project flow for every project that you do and it sets the way to, uh, to start standardizing your projects. So what is project flow? It's an idea that you can set your project up in a particular way that manages the areas that particular events happen in. So there are three key places that every project should have, and that's your input data mapping, your main process area, and your output data mapping. And what these areas do is the same every single project that you do. So your input mapping area is where you take signals from your hardware and put them into places that you want them for your actual logic in your uh, in your main program and then the output layer is the reverse of that so taking information that's already been dealt with you know you set your signals that you want to turn on in your output layer all that stuff is then pulled out of your project and put into the relevant places in your hardware layer and then the actual process area or process logic is the bit that's doing the uh, the actual logic on the data that you've obtained from your io so in my project tree here you can see that i have my main ob1 input mapping output mapping and my process logic and i also have some instant uh, instance dbs for uh, for the actual function blocks and a process data um, global db here so if i go ahead and open main let's have a look at the call order which should be pretty simple to work out it should go input mapping process logic and output mapping. So before we jump in and start having a look at the input mapping side, let's just have a look at where it all starts. So in this project, I have one digital input card and one analog input card. And I have the IO set up as follows. So S2.0 to S2.7 is the name of my tag. And these relate to the slot number, and the channel that the information is coming in on and they're all my digital inputs and then I have S3.0 and S3.1 which are my analog inputs in slot 3 coming from my analog input cards. So let's have a look at the input mapping block. So this block here its sole job is to take information from our input layer so this is our slot 2 channel 0 input and put it into the process data now, at first glance, you might think, why are we doing that? Why don't we just use this tag here in the, in the, the actual process or the program that's, that's doing the actual logic? Um, and the reason for that is this gives us an opportunity between these two to manipulate this signal. So if we need to invert, if we need to add a debounce timer, if we need to put any other conditions around the management and monitoring of this particular input here, we can do it between these two um, between these two instructions. So the reading of S2.0 and then the outputting of its process data equivalent. And that can be quite powerful, especially as you can do it per signal, or you can wrap them up into function blocks. So you have dedicated functions for each type of asset that you have and each signal type that you have. So for example, I could drop in here a not for this particular signal here. And although that we're using the same card with the same type of equipment, same switches uh, and all that sort of stuff, <clears throat> we have a different input now for S2.0 compared to S2.2. They both have the same thing. Sorry, there's a mistake there. That's, it should be switch three, but they do the same thing but uh, now we have a method of manipulation. And if I come down here, we can do the same for our uh, analog as well. So our in analog input mapping is taking S3.0 and we're actually running it through a um, scaling process. So if I were to change this to 5,000, oops, let me actually set a decent maximum value for 10,000 and download that. So if I download that, we'll be able to actually set a value now. It makes sense. So 
modify this value to 5,000 and we get a 50% analog data um, that's ready in our process, already messed about with, already conditioned to what we need for the pro uh, project. But if that changed, if that requirement changed, if this scaling changed, obviously you'd make it dynamic. But uh, if anything needed to be done, filtering, um, averaging, anything like that for the signal, um, before it ends up in our process data, that can all be done here. And our process, the thing that actually takes this data and uses it in our main program, doesn't need to change. So if you have a standard application, but how you're bringing that information into your project changes, this is the best place to do that. And you can set your own systems up and get very good at having drag and drop objects for different scenarios, but your core process in the center stays the same. So here we have the output mapping layer as well, which is very, very simplistic. We just have a, a straightforward system enable that comes from process data, but a substructure outputs. So if process data outputs system enable is on, then we're turning on our only output from this system, which is in slot four, digital output, slot four, channel zero. And that is our system enable signal. Now, that means that we've seen the front end and we've seen the back end now, the input mapping layer and the output mapping layer. And again, we have the same functionality in the output mapping layer. We could put a TOF timer here, for example. So if the system enable goes off for more than five seconds, um, only then do we actually turn S4.0 off. Um, so we have the same ability to manipulate this signal here without changing our core um, code in the middle. So let's go back to main and have a look at how this sits. We have our input mapping here, which we've looked at, and our output mapping here, which we've looked at. And then we have our process logic. And we can see that switch one is the only thing that we're currently waiting from a digital point of view. Switch one is the only thing we're waiting for. And we're also waiting for either process data analog one to come below 35, or we're waiting for process analog data two or process data, sorry, analog two to come above 58.5. So let's split the windows and have a look at the input mapping as well. And if I go ahead and turn this one off, we now, ha now have switch one on. And if I go ahead and change the value for analog one, considering I don't have analog two written in here, uh, at the moment, this is the only one I can change. So I'll go ahead and change this to say a thousand, which will bring it down to 10%. And this comes on. And then if we go back to our output mapping layer and I monitor this, we'll see that the output for our system enable through slot four channel zero is now on. So let's just do a quick recap. Input mapping, process logic, output mapping. The three areas are fundamentally segregated from each other from a logic point of view. What happens in input mapping doesn't have a direct bearing on process logic or output mapping. None of them affect each other. If I was to go and edit input mapping, Tier Portal will not complain to me that something's changing in process logic as well. Um, where there is a potential uh, to, to cause issues, is the process data block, which is the thing that's tying everything together. So from that point of view, yes, they are related to each other, but they're not, in, they're not explicitly tied together. And uh, that's important because it means that we can go ahead and change things in our input mapping layer um, and our output mapping layer without having to change our process logic in any way, uh, other than potentially having to add stuff into process data. But it does open up some interesting concepts because right now our input mapping layer is obviously grabbing stuff from um, our physical channels, our uh, slot two, channel zero, slot two, channel one, our hardware layer. But you could create a separate input mapping layer in which everything comes from simulated values and then switch between which mapping layer you're calling without having to change anything in your main process area. Uh, in fact, if everything writes to process data, simulated or not simulated, 
the main project doesn't know any difference. So hopefully that gets you thinking about different ways of setting your project up, but the three key areas, input mapping, output mapping, and everything in the middle are a great place to start with this journey of standardizing methods, not just code.